Hey, Mark, how's it going? <laughs> it's going pretty good, guys. What and, about... uh, and and I am sure your chat room will have questions. I hope so. Did you like my trailer there, Mark? I did. It was very interesting. I've never been on a show like this. I, in fact, oh. I was a little surprised when, uh, when your guy contacted me. It's like, really? <laughs> well that's i mean this is sean's show i just i'm just like the window dressing i just i'm the, the <laughs> eye candy <laughs> so i always start out by asking my guests you know where in the world are they in your case where in the flat world are you i am just north of seattle on the west coast of the united states on a little island just next to canada called widby w-h-i-d-b-e-y are you a fan of nirvana <laughs> Really? You're going to make that sort of... I, I was here when that whole grunge thing started up, and uh, I, I left shortly afterwards to live in Colorado for 20 years. But it was amazing because MTV just lived here. They just brought up so many trucks, and they were just here constantly. But, you know, and there, were, there was only like, what, six, seven bands up here? But, you know, it made up mo the majority of the scene, so yeah. Yeah. I'll, never that forget, Seattle? I'll never forget that, that MTV Candle Night vigil that Kurt Cobain did. That's, uh, that's I was I was there. You were there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The I was there at, down, down at the, I, well at, at the Seattle Center. I mean, it's not like I was you know crying in front of it. It was a little. <laughs> I, I was an '80s kid, so the whole grunge thing was like, eh. I kind of liked glam rock. I, I kind of dug yeah. that whole thing. Was, so was that a big was, Seattle thing then, Nirvana? Oh, it spread oh, everywhere. Yeah, that was grunge, grunge. Was Seattle? It was the whole, huh. you know, dark plaid and and rain and you know nobody taking a shower for a week. That sort of stuff. I, th <laughs> I think of Fraser Crane. Oh, from the show. Yeah, that's Seattle. Yeah, that is Seattle. Yes, that's my, absolutely my from from Seattle. the from the show Fraser. We've done yeah. videos about the uh, Kurt Cobain, the conspiracy with Courtney Love. Have you ever looked at any of that stuff? Yeah, and we're never, of course, going to know the whole truth there. But, uh, I mean, she's not exactly a pillar of goodness. Let's put it that way. So, I don't know. T her, tough own, to say. Her, own, her own private investigator that she hired to look into it, yeah. looked into it, and then did a documentary about her involvement because yeah so <laughs> i mean a lot of a lot of rock stars have their own personal demons so it's tough to say and grunge is a depressing sort of genre come on let's yeah. face it it's not exactly poppy it's not madonna yeah are you able to do a kurt cobain impression andrew um come <laughs> as you are da, da, da. like that <laughs> i'm gonna read you something mark and uh, let's let's see let's get your thoughts on this. I am, by the way, not looking at the chat room. I try to avoid anything over there because yeah. this I'll is my first time on uh, re restream. Hmm. It's great because you can like broadcast on every platform and simultaneously on multiple YouTube channels. Ah, yeah. did not know that. All right, so I've got this off the internet. Uh -huh. I believe that it was Pythagoras who first proposed that the Earth was round sometime. He based his idea on the fact that he showed the moon must be round by observing the shape of the Terminator. The line between the part of the moon to in, um, whoops, I must have been there. Part of the moon in the light and the part of the moon in the dark as it moved through its orbital cycle. Pythagoras mm -hmm. reasoned that if the moon was round, then the Earth must be round as well. After that, sometimes between 500 BC and 430 BC, a fellow called Anaxagoras determined the true cause of solar and lunar eclipses and then the shape of the Earth's shadow on the moon during the lunar eclipse. It was also used as evidence that the Earth was round. Around 350 BC, the great Aristotle declared that the Earth was a sphere based on observations he made about which constellations you can see in the sky as you travel further and further away from the equator. Right. And during the next 100 years or so, Aristarchus and Eratosthenes actually measured the size of the Earth. All right, let's, let's get your response to that oh my response to that yeah it, 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 all that aside why did just about every culture in the world draw the same thing when it came to uh the cosmology in fact you could google this anytime you want type in ancient cosmologies they all drew the same thing they all drew a snow globe which is you know we're that we're living on some and by the way we don't use the word round or, or so we don't when we're describing globe sphere or ball 
you know, cause your din dining room table is round. Your, your dinner plate is round, but they all drew the same thing, which is, you know, we're living on a flat stationary disc somewhere that's covered with some sort of barrier and everything you see on the sky is moving, not us. And so why did all, why did just about every culture draw the same thing? I know you're going to say, Oh, the Greeks, the Greeks, screw the Greeks. Right. Even even they <laughs> even they didn't know they, they were talking about Screwing. this when they didn't know about it, the shape of the continents. So it's like, yeah, great. I, I get your whole sticks and shadows argument, but it also works if the light source is very, very close and very, very small. How's that? So, 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 go on, go on Sean. <laughs> what what is your view then of let's get that clear? Let's so what is your view of how the, the earth does look? You're in yeah, Seattle. Exactly. What does the world look like? Yeah, go on. Uh, and normally I would have a background, but the green screen we tried earlier, for whatever reason, for on on this doesn't doesn't do very well. Um, you are living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, uh, for lack of a better term, a planetarium, a terrarium, a Hollywood soundstage. And for again, most of the cultures, it kind of looks like a snow globe. So you were you were talking about a well, aside from the the building things, you're talking about a giant saltwater pond with islands in the middle of it which are our continents and the north pole would be in the center and there is no official south pole it's just surrounded in fact all the continents look pretty much the same with the exception of antarctica antarctica isn't this island continent that looks like uh, australia roughly the same size it is stretched out around the entire thing and it's much much larger and how, and how and we and no this? And nobody figured this out until, sorry, until about 1960, the United States and the Soviet Union. And they decided that civilization had come too far. So it's like, ah, you know what? We're just not going to tell anybody un until we have to. How do I know this? Hmm. That's, that's the question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, mostly verifying ancient, ancient cosmologies. I looked into this back in 2014 because I hated it. Everybody that goes into flat earth hates it. Oh God, they hate it so much, including me because it's ridiculous. I was, I've been in conspiracies. I, I have an opinion on every conspiracy you could think of. Some I like, some I hate, but there was one I absolutely would not look at, which was flat earth. And in 2014, I was like, I'm getting older. So I was like, eh, hey, you know what? I'll take a look. Why not Sh knock this thing out in a weekend and hammered on nine months later, right? Nine months later, I, in being in 2015, I gave up. I, I said, okay, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. I'm just going to ask the internet because the internet hive mind is very, very intelligent. And I said, tell me, tell, tell me where I went wrong. And I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues, put them out there, put all my contact information out there. I said, shoot it down, please let me get back to my life. And everyone was coming back to me uh, with all sorts of amazing stuff. I had, I had pilots and engineers and air traffic controllers and lots of people from the military. They're all saying, you know what? It's not that crazy. Here's why. Mm -hmm. And so, sorry, but as far as the, like the five bullet points, I think I sent you the, uh, the thing on it. I'll, I'll, I, I won't go into the details because I know we're limited on time, but um, quit real quick. Long distance photography. First and foremost, that's what drags most people into this, which is you can see way farther than you normally could. So if the, the curvature is eight inches per mile per mile, eventually the boats are gone and they're gone forever. You should never be able to see them again. But with HD technology, again, this is post grunge music. Uh, with HD cameras, now you can zoom into the distance and you can pull these boats back into frame, number one. Uh, number two, vacuum versus gravity, meaning uh, there's no way a pure vacuum of space would not rip off the atmosphere and i'll give you i could give you an example on that uh number three would be the uh moon temperature which is the the moon is generating a cold laser light which is just blows me away meaning it's colder in the moonlight than the moon shade up to 13 degrees fahrenheit uh number four would be the eclipse shadow kind of tying into sean's question earlier which is uh, why is the eclipse shadow so small? If the moon is 2,000 miles wide, why is the blackout zone only 70 miles wide? Which is roughly what we kind of say the moon is in size. And five would be um, the Van Allen radiation belt question, which is, okay, if the Van Allen, are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no? If they are, then how the Americans get through them with no shielding whatsoever and, and nobody died, nobody got radiation poisoning. There's still four of these guys limping around today. And if they are not deadly, then why is NASA, did NASA make this wonderful program saying, oh yeah, we can't test our Mars program capsules because there's too much radiation and people would die. There you go. Those, that's the, like the five mm -hmm. questions 
I threw at uh, this astrophysicist out of Georgetown University, and he just folded. <clears throat> nope, not doing this. Going home. Right. All right. Well, that's, but, all very, that's, on, all very, that's all very technical, and perhaps some of the viewers are. are I, I know, I, I, so. and I'm. I, yeah, I, I can. I go, can make it easy for him. Let, if you let's want just. Me go, to. Let's just. Let, let me ask you some questions. Just get some basics here. Okay. What shape do you believe the Earth is then? And it's not looking, at it, looking at it from space. Ah, you see a, you see what, what space? If it's what, flat, what? is it like a, a forty-five inch single with no, UK here, on one side and Australia wait, wait, on the other? Here, here, hang on. If you've got any questions, viewers, as well, please put them in the chat. And there Ash go. is currently collating. There you go. So you believe the Earth is like a, a snow dome, the shape of yep. a snow dome. Yep. That's I about see. as easy as it gets right there. And by the way, when you said, it, you know, it's floating in space, what space? Why does like, there have to why does there have to be space? Like pictures taken from space that show the shape of the Earth. Ah. But wouldn't, wouldn't pilots, as they reached... The base of the snow dome, pi yeah. airplane pilots, would they have to like seriously adjust their flight trajectory to go down? The not flat not normal, not normal pilots, because you're talking about something is very very huge. Uh, this thing is so big. I, mean, I know it's a small little model, and I could bring out a bigger model, but you can look these up. Uh, the the dome of this thing would be so high by comparison. I mean, even if it was say three thousand miles high. Well, the commercial aircraft cap out at about 10 miles. Spy planes, if you believe them, cap out at about 20 miles. So they don't have to do anything. Um, there's this wonderful video by Neil deGrasse Tyson, the world's most famous scientist, not knocking Brian Cox. He's number two, uh, which is he said that, you know, there was a Red Bull jump that happened some years ago. And the Red Bull, you know, they, they, they sent this guy up in a balloon, right, put him in an astronaut suit and had him jump out at 130,000 feet. It's not that high. It's only 20 miles. Well, the, the, the pictures they took showed this massive, massive curvature. And Neil deGrasse and Tyson comes out. He goes, yeah, it's scientifically dishonest. Now, he hates flat Earth, but he said this. He goes, he goes you can't see the curve from 130,000 feet. So why is Red Bull doing this? And it's like, well, the images. I've talked to producers, and they, I, I ask them, why do you run those Red Bull images? And they go, well, it's good television. They're good images. They're dramatic. They show this massive curve. I go, but it's not real. You know, we don't care gets viewers so one of our so, viewers Ari has pointed out that if it were the shape that you're proposing that perhaps satellites wouldn't be able to work because they're programmed to orbit a spherical earth mm, look up something called the high altitude um uh nasa balloon program they've been doing this since the 50s nasa is the world's largest produ producer and consumer of helium in the world a lot of people don't know this they can launch balloons and it's not secret information they can launch payloads of upwards of 4 tons uh which is and i'm not going to do the conversion for you guys um roughly 8000 pounds you know that's more than a couple cars and they can do this with balloons pennies on the dollar and they can keep them up there it's not like weather balloons where they just go up and they burst and they come back down they can keep them up there for years which also answers a big question of ours, which was, if you remember the, uh, the movie uh, Gravity with Sandra Bullock, you know, the, the concept was, oh, yeah, a satellite ran into another satellite and then it just became this cascading effect and the, the whole sky became this thing of, of jagged metal. It's like that would have happened already. In fact, it would have happened many, many times. So why hasn't it? Why, why haven't we seen this cascading effect of satellites? It's because they're not, they're not rotating this ball. They're just freaking balloons. And you can see them go down. We've got wonderful videos. They go down every once in a while, and they, they get picked up really quickly and quietly and taken away. No one wants to talk about it. It's brilliant. Hmm. I'm interested, I think, on a, a almost a philosophical level. What, the first thing you said when I, when I asked why, uh, why you believe the Earth is flat was, the ancient cosmologists, I think you said. Yeah. Um, why give them more weight and credence than modern scientists with all the mo with all the science and the, the, you know they didn't even have electricity. But those ancient cosmologists, they can't have been that smart. Well, no, but at the same time, everyone was on the same page. Meaning, you have you know governments that do, that weren't communicating. You know, back in the day when it was just horses and ships. And yet they were all seeing and drawing the exact same thing. So that was, you know, that when I was looking at that, I was going, okay, why is everybody looking at this the exact same way? It's like, oh, because they were all ignorant. 
they couldn't read and write and it was like they were just absorbing the stars you know mm -hmm. going over in the sky and yet if you watch a time lapse video not much has changed since then if you watch a time lapse type in uh, like star trails time lapse when you watch that you can't break out of the illusion when you're watching that and it's like you know you know because of science tells you that it's like oh we're moving not the stars but when you watch it it's the stars that are moving so why isn't the easiest answer the best answer in this case why aren't the stars moving why you know why it's like because nasa told us so it's like oh you mean the americans and by the way i i have to bring this up because i know you guys are out in uh, england right yeah 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 you're in england so americans believe you know believe absolutely because you know it's a patriotic duty that we went to the moon and you know we were the only ones we planted the flag go go rah rah we're the best why did you guys believe it and every time i ask this i the knee-jerk response is almost inevitably the same which is oh because it was on television because the americans put it on television and go because we don't lie about anything ever we especially our governments we never lie americans oh god we're so honest come on you don't believe that <laughs> we, no, and, and by the way, that also we left in 1972. Why didn't anybody go back? And I have to give the British credit. I have to give the UK credit because all these other countries got into a space program, right? There's a Japan, Japan space program and Russian and, and uh, the, the European Union and stuff. England never got into it. Why not? Because they were they smart. Money. That's why. Remember, remember <laughs> don't forget the James Bond film where they made fun of it, where Sean Connery's running across the make, fake moon set was brilliant and the and the astronauts couldn't catch him because they were still in character they were running in slow motion oh, awesome. but aren't they sort of making fun of you mark with those when it, when you see satirical sort of things in tv shows and movies and things they they're sort of they're making the, the joke is that some people really believe this was faked sometimes it's a joke and sometimes i think they're they're doing a wink to the camera uh all the way going all the way back to the wonderful documentary um by stanley kubrick uh, yes. which was um, uh, about Stanley Kubrick uh, called Room 237, where he supposedly built into The Shining the entire fake, his involvement in the American fake moon program, which is, why not? I, and by the way, I, I don't blame him. Every director would have gone for it. If the government comes to you with a blank check and says, oh yeah, we'll give you unlimited money to, to do this, but you can't tell anybody. Who wouldn't go for that? Hmm. So... If the Earth is flat, why do we say Australians are down under? <laughs> that's just conditioning. Um, <laughs> that's that's straight up conditioning. In fact, we we have a hard time. Our community has a hard time breaking out of that because there's so many sayings, especially yeah, the the down under and down here and down there. Even in America, when we like when we're driving from Seattle to California, oh yeah, we're going to drive down to California. So, and and people forget it's like even if it was a globe why is this the top and and you got and australia is the bottom but that's a yeah. whole other thing it's like, could you demonstrate on your uh object where australia yeah. is oh it's still there i don't know if you can see it where, whereabouts is australia on that it's right uh, right down you can see it it's off to the and it's all just flat and then the dome at the top is like the atmosphere is it yeah, 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 which, which goes into a whole other thing, which is why is our atmosphere still here? I, I have to get this argument out because it's the one I love more than long-distance photography. Well, can, you also, can you answer that? And also, why when you get to the end of the sphere, don't you yeah. walk off the edge? Oh, because you can't. There's, there's nothing to, to walk off of. I mean, the, it, it, no matter where you go in this model... And again, you can look this up, and I don't know if you want to do screenshots right now. Yeah. But um, no matter where you go in this model, you're going to run into uh, ice and snow and more ice and more snow, no matter which way, which direction you have. And what would and, happen if you did get to the edge? Just a wall? Well, that's just it. A lot of the, one of the big misconceptions is, is that Antarctica is the end of the world. No, it's the beginning of the end. I Meaning the Antarctic coastline isn't the edge. It's not like the Game of Thrones, this big ice wall. Although it is a very high ice wall that comes off the, the ocean. It goes in thousands and thousands of miles. That's the big catch. The Americans were looking for this thing for the better part of 30 years. Uh, they sent down their, um, the youngest admiral in the history of the Navy, Admiral Byrd. And he flew around in planes for 30 years looking for this damn thing. And then when he found it, and of course they're never going to tell it, tell you that he found it, uh, then they put in the Antarctic Treaty, the un, only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties that says that no corporation can go down there and set up shop ever for the end of time. It's not even so up what for do, What do you think is there? A wall? 
Oh yeah, sure. Why not? Some sort of some sort of barrier. Uh, but it, remember, it would be thousands of miles inland from the beach. And so the Antarctic Treaty says that you can't go down there. I mean, yeah, you can go down there and spend 15,000 pounds and, and get your pictures taken with penguins and crap like that. But eventually, you're not going to be able to just be able to run amok. And that made so much sense to me because uh, this world is based on greed and money and power. And yet, in fact, if you want to start fracking in my backyard next week, you could make that happen if you're an oil and gas company. But those same companies aren't even allowed to talk about Antarctica. When have you ever seen that? Ever, ever, ever. But why does British Petroleum never not go down to Antarctica? They can't. So the way you described it, then, it's kind of like the limits of the, you know, the boundaries of a video game. So, yeah. so do you believe that we're in some kind of simulation? Yep. Yeah, I do. Uh, what, but what most is, of the what time, is, what is your definition of a simulation? My, my definition of simulation. Well, I was in the video game industry for years. I mean, I used to play video games for a living. I was a video game producer, and they're all striving to be the same thing, which is a virtual reality that the player cannot break out of. Uh, you are once you were immersed in it, and uh, you are there's no way to get out because you weren't the the access to it. Your memory of it was blocked. So. And, and by the way, when I got in this whole flat earth model, I'd love to talk about simulations, but most people don't get it. Meaning, it, look, it's been 20 years since the Matrix, you know, and people still don't understand the, the concept of the Matrix. But even but all the entertainment companies are trying to build in some sort of virtual out. We've seen it in like Ready Player One and Free Guy and stuff like that. But it's almost impossible to do because you can't hook up the other senses. But we can build visually uh, amazing worlds right now. I mean, you've seen them out there. GTA, the latest GTA, which I don't play because of the whole crime aspect, uh, is, is a beautiful game. And we can do some wonderful, wonderful stuff. And yes, if it is, if it is flat and it is enclosed, it's probably virtual. No question. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the double yeah. slit experiment is a big, big tell of that. I don't think people in general have much of a problem with simulation theory. I think Elon Musk said it. It's quite mainstream, isn't it? This idea that it's oh, actually yeah. very, very likely we live in a simulation. I but, think what people find hard is this this flat world idea because hmm. so many people in our simulation, if we are in a simulation, would have to be lying for that to be oh, true. Oh, well, or, or NPCs. Uh, yeah, which is the whole the concept behind uh, Free Guy. Uh, but yeah, and, and by the way, um, a lot of people, again, what you just said, it's a paradox. Lots of people can understand now the, the you know virtual realities. But what people forget is video games are based on completely flat models, meaning there are no curves in video games. You just don't know any better because, well, it's like, well, you can't see the curve. And it's also completely, it's not even a snow globe. It's boxed off. The skybox system is what they do with the ceiling. Like everything has right angles because computers can't understand circles. They hate them. They, they only deal with right angles. That's why pixels are, are perfectly square. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's this weird paradox. You know, in video games, like, for example, we have to put in the distance. Uh, we have to put in haze in the distance, fake atmosphere, so you can't see too far which also ties into the what we're dealing with our real world. Well, our real world, which is you can't see too far because the atmosphere thickness. Lots of people will say, and I haven't, I'm, again, I'm ignoring the chat, which is why can't you see Japan from California? Why can't you see Europe from New York? And why can't you see Mount Everest, Everest from everywhere? Well, it's because you're not breathing in nothing. What, what we're breathing in right here is, is a gas. You know, it's a couple gases. It's mostly nitrogen, a little bit of oxygen, and, and some trace gases. And that gets thickness, you know, gains thickness over time. No different than water. Why, when you dive, if you've ever dived with anybody, um, at 200 feet down, you can't see the sun, even on a bright summer day. Same, thi same thing with the atmosphere. So in the, in the chat, they're asking about your religious beliefs, which ties into my next question, which is, yep. if we are in a simulation, who designed it? And what is the purpose of it? I mean, what are we? Okay. No, that's a good one. And I'm glad you guys got to that, which is uh, who built it and why? Uh, it's probably the most important question. Most people get, get around the, the flat part, which is uh, it can only be one of two answers. One is an older and more powerful civilization than ourselves, obviously, uh, kind of like uh, the movie Contact, uh, or uh, the divine. And at that point, you're kind of splitting hairs because one man's advanced tech is another man's deity. So I, do I think God is a programmer? Yeah, yeah, I do. Absolutely. We didn't invent programming. And, and some of the design features of this place are amazing. Uh, do I believe in God? Yes, I do. Uh, was I raised in a born-again evangelical 
Christian home? Yeah, I was. But I fell away from that when I got into tech for obvious reasons. And then got pulled kind of back, not back into the church, but back into spirituality when I got into this. Because if it was built, if it was created like this, then it was created by someone. And this just screams intelligent design. <laughs> And science doesn't like doesn't want to go there, you know, which, you know, it's the opposite of what science says. Science says you're on a little tiny spinning ball covered in a little bit of water and smoke flying through an impossible universe. And mm. you're just left over from the Big Bang. And we say, no, it's probably the easier option, which is this. And it's ninety nine point nine nine percent of the people believe the illusion like the Matrix or the Truman Show or one of those things. And uh, that's what you go with. I mean, and by the way, who's again, who's to say there is space? Why can't it just be this sitting on somebody's desk? Who's to say there isn't seven billion little tiny things living in that thing right now? And mm. one more thing, the planetarium argument, which is when you go into a planetarium, and I know that kind of dates me, you are looking at a projection on a screen. All this, you know, the, does the moon look spherical? Yes. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Because it's just an image on the ceiling. Mm. And if you brought somebody in from, I don't know, an old school Amish community that's never seen tech in their life, that would just blow their minds, right? It's like, holy smokes. How, what is, what is wrong with it? You know, why does the sky look mm. like this? It's like, no, no, it's an illusion. Mark, here's my issue with this. It, feel, it feels like there are two separate theories. One is simulation theory and one is flat earth theory. Sure. And you're sort of, a lot of your arguments point to simulation theory, which I think a lot of people are right behind that it could be real, that we could be just something on someone's desk. I think a lot of people do agree with that. But flat earth theory seems to suggest you know, just by its name that we're not in a simulation, which a lot of people think as well, okay, we're not, but the earth is flat. Right. And a lot of your, uh, you know, for example, the Van Allen belt trap, right? And you said this, this scientist just ran away. Well, I looked up literally for about 30 seconds before coming on here. I said, what's the Van Allen belt trap? I don't know what that is. It's a yeah. bit of radi radiation that if you go through, it can be dangerous, right? right. But there are huge right. gaps that you can go through that aren't as strong radiation. There are parts of it. And I'm, I don't, I, that took me 10 seconds. Now, who do we believe? You're right. I, you know. I'm just believing that information, right? I understand right. that that's what you're probably thinking. But at the end of the day, as human beings, I suppose on the one hand, we have to be vigilant against, uh, you know, government could be lying to us and that kind of thing. But on the other yeah. hand, surely we go with the scientists of today. I mean, how sure are you, Mark, out of 100? How sure are you of flat earth theory? Oh, 99.999%. Uh, I used yeah. to be only like 95% when I started this thing. Uh, but the reinforcement I got from the subject matter experts, which I interviewed on my channel, and they came to me unsolicited, they yeah. all said the same thing. And but nobody that's, it's dangerous. 99.999% about anything is very dangerous, isn't it? That's, you know, done in Kruger levels. That's like, you know, being the more sure you are suggests you might, you want to believe it. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on, point zero 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 one percent. Of course, anyone can be wrong on just about anything. I've been. No, I, I mean, it's too sure. I mean, you th you're too. Oh certain. no! Oh no! No, I don't think it. I don't think it's dangerous. I absolutely believe this. I absolutely yeah, I believe this. No, no question. And by the way, when it comes to, I know when you said that people, the blurring of the lines. The only, the only problem we have nowadays is virtual reality because we've done it in pop culture for a number of years now has become a, a very accepted thing because we've been beating people over the heads with it since the, the late nineties. Right. Mm. Well, flat earth predates that by a long, long way, just because we're now talking about it in different terms, doesn't make it any less, you know, valid. It just means that we have now have different terms to describe it. And so, yes, I absolutely love to say if it's virtual, it probably looks like this because in our virtual worlds, the ones we create, this is what we build. Literally this, only it's squared off at the edges. It's no different. Hmm. So Trump. if we're in a simulation yes, and the matrix gave us a heads up on that, yeah, is Keanu Reeves in on it? And why is, is the designer a bit like, you know, a serial killer who's not been caught and wants to throw a clue out there to try and oh, 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 the reveal what, what the truth is? Um, I believe there's something else. I'm that... oh, sorry. There... Again, I don't know how much time we have. Um, there's I, I believe there's another layer to this, which is let's get to the why real fast, because a lot of people will ask, OK, what's outside of this? If this is where we live, then what's outside of this? You know, what are they doing? You know, is the is the person, you know, is the creator lurking about? Uh, is it is it a big joke or is it um, more of a novelty thing? 
Meaning I believe that if this world is 99.9% conflict, which it is, uh, it doesn't matter how beautiful, how powerful, how talented, uh, how rich you are. You always have something to complain about. Always. No one's ever completely satisfied. Even, even monks sitting on a Tibetan mountaintop still have to deal with mortality. You, you can't escape it. If that's the case, then what is outside of here is an unlimited universe. And I think it is cyclical. I, I think the universe runs off of novelty. And which is why we always ask constantly, hey, what's new? What's new? What's new? I mean, how many people are going crazy because they're running out of things to watch on Netflix, for example? I'm watching stuff I would have, wouldn't have touched five years ago. Toss a hmm. coin to the Witcher. <laughs> <laughs> you watching, watching, that? Are you watching the I, Witcher? I've watched, oh, please, I blew past that. I'm, I'm watching, <laughs> I'm watching even stuff. It's like, okay, you watch the Witcher. Here's, here's five other recommended shows. Well, I, okay, fine. I'll just watch those. But, but I do believe that what out, what's outside of it is un, unlimited. Now, if you want to call it heaven or Nirvana or Shambhala or whatever it is, fine. But I think that eventually what happens is you run out of novelty and you have to refresh and you have to gain perspective. So you come to a place like this and it's limited lifespan, all sorts of different sufferings, line from the matrix. Human beings seem to define the reality through misery and suffering, which is true. And then you go back. Yeah, I just think, like I said, I think if it's simulation theory, then it doesn't look like anything. It's just a computer. It doesn't look like a. Well, a no, do, 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 don't don't be so sure because remember, even when we build stuff, it doesn't matter how good a computer you are or how big the computer system is. You have to define the borders. You have to define the boundaries. Now, hmm. yes, it, you're right in the in the in the way that the whole. Uh, uh, wave particle thing whereas if if you're in a, a computer simulation the whole if a tree falls in the forest and you aren't there to see it does it still make a sound well now we know with computer simulations no because it hasn't been rendered yet there is no tree it's just it's just over there in blank code it hasn't been drawn there's no there is no freaking tree yeah. but it's does a nice it does, thought but does it exist as a bear a border yes gta exists as a world it has boundaries uh, Fortnite has boundaries. Everything has boundaries. Eventually, you have to build the boundaries in. A viewer wants, hang tight, wants to know if aliens are real. And earlier on, you mentioned like about ancient civilizations. Yes. Do you think that there was a fusion of alien DNA with the ancient civilizations, if you do believe aliens are real? Oh, boy. I'll see if I can abbreviate this one. Uh, do I believe the aliens are real? Yes. But I don't think they're, or do I think they're from Mars and Jupiter? No, I do not. A uh, British guy told me years and years ago, he goes, you want to see some weird stuff? Grab some night vision binoculars, start looking up at the sky. I did way before flat earth. And it's like the sky is crawling with stuff. Do I think they are from Mars and Jupiter and Venus? No, I do not. I think they're just older versions of us. We are not the first people. You guys know this. We're not the first people to rent this apartment, not by a long shot. I mean, the, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, uh, Puma Punku, the sunken cities off of Japan and India. There's all sorts of remnants of, of previous civilizations. Our civilization only goes back unbroken, maybe 5,000 years. And there's stuff that's way, way older than that. So but whoever's flying around up there, I think there's rules. If you want to look up some really cool stuff to your person over there that was asking about that, the greatest UFO sighting in history, our history, wasn't Roswell or 1899 Aurora, Texas or any of that crap. It was 1561 Germany. Look up the, the 1561 Nuremberg event. It is brilliant. On a beautiful, clear day, two huge armadas come over the city and just start hammering at each other for a full hour. Not a cloud in the sky. And then a third faction comes in and scatters them. Big giant black ship. They even talked about ancient aliens. They left out the black ship. And uh, it's the coolest thing ever. And they again, there weren't any photographs, but they drew the whole thing. They had a full hour to draw it. So there was wood carvings. They're like, oh, this is great. You know, eating their toast and schnitzel mm. gluten for breakfast, watching the whole thing. It's awesome. Yeah. So do I think do I think they're here? Yes. Do I think they get to interact with us on a regular basis? No. Uh, call it the prime directive out of Star Trek, which is you can't just land in the middle of Paris and start signing autographs and taking selfies. It would screw everything up. I think there's rules. I think there's protocols in place. <laughs> Andrew? Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I don't know. It's what it's that thing, isn't it, with the conspiracy theorists? It's like you have to sort of to believe one, you have to often believe a whole network of them. So it's also the there's UFOs and there's this and there's that. Well, and, and like I said, it's that certainty. Do, but you did say you, I didn't know this about you, but that you grew up in a uh, a very 
devout uh, re- religious family. Yeah. And, and sh- surely it's possible, and, and I know it must be frustrating for you to hear this, I understand that, but it must be possible that you might be replacing those urges with, with other you know, desires to look for the extraterrestrial or the extreme. No, no, no. I it, it's and I, I'm not offended. I mean, you can say anything you want to me. I've had way worse <laughs> since we from the last six years, uh, which is for me. I lo- I love the idea of an objective truth. But we live in a world, as you guys know from your stuff, we live in a world of layers and layers and layers of, de- of deceptions. People lie about stuff all the damn time. And with organizations, I mean, come on. We know there's conspiracies. You know where three or more people conspire. To do, to do stuff uh, in, um, let's see, business and politics and sports and entertainment. And yeah, even journalism and science it happens all the time. So once you can get your head around that, that, you know, I, I grew up again, very, very sheltered. So when like when I saw JFK in the theater for the first time in the early 90s, I was like blown away. I was like, wait, people in authority lie about stuff? I had no idea. And so now, you know, I've, I've looked into enough things. It's like, yeah, people will lie to protect their interests. So would they lie about all sorts of things? And would they lie about the shape of the world? Of course they would. And that's, by the way, that's one of the things that sold me on this. It's like, would I lie if I found out in 1960, if I was the government or whatever group you want to call them, the Illuminati or whoever it is, would I, would I, would I lie about this? Yeah, you bet I would. But the public wasn't even remotely ready in 1960. Are they more ready now? Yeah kind of i mean we've we've given them enough hints but 1960 no so i i agree uh, my qualification for this conspiracy is would i improve on it and would i say that the ends justified the means no matter what the means were and if i agree with it i that's that's it it's like oh yeah that makes sense totally wouldn't would do it we only have time for one more question it's come from hugh janice yeah do, do you believe mark in time travel Whew. That's a tough one because I love time travel. I love the concept of time travel. I, I fantasize about time travel. I, any time travel movie that comes out, I will watch it. But do I think it's happened here uh, with the whole Mandela effect thing? Uh, maybe because it, time travel is tricky. A- any other movie will tell you, um, you know, if you're talking about f- f- fragmenting parallel lines or if you're talking about a, a singularity where it just keeps changing, you know, the same timeline. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't believe we have the ability now, even though Nazi Germany was kind of toying with the idea towards the end of the war, that was the, the myth. Uh, but I don't think if we are doing it, well, let's put it this way. If we pulled it off, you're never going to know because either it goes off into a completely separate timeline, which isn't tied to you, or it happens and changes your life in a way you're not going to know in the first place. Do you think something like Dr. Who's TARDIS would be practical? <sighs> I love Doctor Who's TARDIS. <laughs> I love that show. I love, I, and no offense to Jodie Whittaker, she should have never, ever been cast for that, for that last, the last couple seasons. It was really wasn't her fault because it was the writing. Honestly, I would have chosen um, uh, Tom, Tom Ellis. Is that right? Uh, oh. The guy that played Lucifer. It was Tom uh, Bates, this, wasn't there? Wasn't he one of them? Uh, I don't know. Around. I don't know. Tom, Tom Ellis. Well, anyway, Tom Ellis, oh, you, you might want to look at. He played Lucifer in the United States uh, series Lucifer about yeah. the devil helping Los Angeles Police Department, which is so weird. <laughs> um, uh, but no, I love the the TARDIS. I love the concept, and I, I love the idea. Uh, if if anyone runs sees a TARDIS flying around, please let me know. I, I'd love to. Hmm. I'd love to talk to him. Who who asked that question, Sean? Mister Janus. I asked about time travel. I threw in about the TARDIS. Oh, did you All throw right, in about so, the TARDIS? So, so I, lo- I, I was in love with it ever since Christopher Eccleston broke into the new series. I, I remember watching that on BBC America. I was going, wow. I never watched any of the early ones and uh, yeah. just fell in love with it. Mark, we've run out of time. A huge uh, thank you for coming on and, and you know being such a good sport with all these questions. Oh yeah, yeah could yeah. you please tell the viewers where they can find you and follow you and and you know? Yeah, yeah, you it's easy because I hate social media. Um, so <laughs> just type in uh, Flat Earth Mark into YouTube. That's how you find me. Uh, my channel's on there. It's just my name, Mark Sargent. And uh, there's a YouTube documentary. I mean, a Netflix documentary called Behind the Curve, which it's 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 a fair look at what we did a couple of years ago and um, a couple of books on Amazon and you'll find me. It's not hard. I mean, all my information's out there. It's how you guys get a hold of me. Cool. All Thanks, right. Mark. You, you have a, a good rest of your evening in Washington. I think you said, and um, I will blast, mm. blast out some Nirvana. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Watch some Frasier.
<laughs> Arson <laughs> Frazier. Kelsey, by the way, Kelsey's one of ours. I Build, talked I talked to him a couple years ago. Build a TARDIS. He's a flat earther. Yeah. Kelsey Grammer. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Well, he's an yeah. alcoholic, wasn't he? <laughs> What's that got to do with it? A lot. <laughs> hey, no. Oh, by the way, and I sent this to you. Last thing, Nova, Novak's one of ours. Uh, again, not surprised. <laughs> All right, no, I, I'm just Mark. kidding, Mark. Have a Toodaloo. good one. Cheerio. Right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>